I had been dreaming of completing this ride for about 10 years and I've been planning seriously for the past four months, but it's just not meant to be. But the good news is New Mexico isn't going anywhere. I can come back another day. back I'm back on the Great Divide and it feels so good Woo oh man so this is the new priority 600 X not the prototype that I rode last summer on the divide of course we've got the pinion and gates drive train so smooth this is my place this is my home. This is where I feel alive. And I love the state of New Mexico. I love the food. I love the people. The landscapes is going to turn into desert once I get way down south. I can't wait. So it looks dark in all directions. It's dark behind me and there's a storm in front of me. So I don't think I'm gonna escape this one. I'm gonna get wet. <laughs> and I'm up at about 10,000 feet. So this could actually be snow. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> <sighs> This is what happens here in Colorado in May. It can snow. That's all right. This is so cool. It's so beautiful. You don't see these a lot in Colorado. They're definitely out here, but I've only seen them a handful of times and they're definitely cool looking creatures. So I was riding in the snow, freezing cold. I got to this little town called Horca. In Spanish it'd be Orca, I guess. And I was told to talk to Charlie right here. Well, I can't thank you enough. This is really, really special. It's so warm in here. It feels amazing. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, this is pretty cool. You know, this is why I ride my bike to meet wonderful people like this. And here I am in a warm house. She's going to feed me lasagna. I get to take a warm shower and that's awesome after a day of freezing in the snow. <laughs> you know, this is a pretty good day one. So I just looked at the weather for tonight and tomorrow. Are those snowflakes? Oh man, all day long. So I'm just waking up and I look out the window, it's not good. <laughs> so I've made the decision to stay here another day in this family. They're so kind to let me stay with them. And the reason why I'm staying is because it's the forecast is calling for more snow and more cold and my route is gonna just take me up to 10,000 feet. So it's just gonna be even colder up there and I just don't wanna be miserable all day and then freezing cold in my tent. So I'm gonna wait it out and hopefully tomorrow will bring a little bit of sunshine, maybe, who knows? Yeah, I don't think I've had more fun with this total stranger for all day than anyone like Ryan. Oh, thank you, you so much. Can we get a hug? Oh, yes. you guys are wonderful. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. You know, I say it all the time, but there's a lot of good people out there in this world, and it just makes me really happy knowing that people like Libby and Charlie are on this planet just spreading love and kindness. Look at this view. Wow. Life on the wild side. It says Conejos Canyon, 
stretches out before you and remains one of the wildest areas in Colorado. The Conejos River begins 40 miles upstream in the rugged San Juan Mountains, where the last known grizzly bear in Colorado was found. You're slippery. Oh boy. I don't know about this. <laughs> the road goes right there. I wonder if it's worth even trying to... Wow. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> Let's see if we can get my bike up there. It is very heavy. Oh man. <laughs> Must have been a hiker on the Continental Divide Trail who came through here. Can't imagine anybody else walking through here. Hopefully we don't have any more snow drifts this big. <laughs> Ah. Mm. It's a little bit muddy today. Well, I'm certainly not making good time anymore. <laughs> this has really slowed me down. More snow, more snow, more snow. We got more snow. But that's okay, because the sun is shining in. I'm outside and that's cool. <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Problem with this route is it keeps on going up. And up means snow. <laughs> I want to go down. I was okay with all this while the sun was shining, but now it's raining on me. <laughs> this is a challenge, there's no doubt about it. I really did not expect this. Okay. Whew. So now the snow is like insanely deep. So hard to like even push my bike. Uh, come on. Uh, remember Ryan, you chose to do this. This is your idea of fun. It's snow for as far as the eye can see. And I've just been pushing and just not going fast and my feet are soaking wet and freezing cold. I thought that I might be able to see the end of snow, but uh-uh, not right now. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Ugh. This is absolutely demoralizing. I've been pushing for hours. When I first hit the snow this morning, I was like, oh, this is fun, it's an adventure. I really, truly thought I'd be out of it quickly. I can't even move my bike. <sighs> Get me out of here. Come on, you got it. Come on, Ray. Check it out. 
You don't need a kickstand when there's this much snow. It just stands there. How you doing, bike? Heave ho! And then I sink. <laughs> and then I... Oh, my feet are stuck. Okay, and then I do it again. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. You see, and I, I make a little bit of progress every step I take. That's the moral of this story. Just keep moving forward, even if it's super slow. This is good news. Looks like I'm finally going to have somewhat of a downhill. I need to lose elevation so I can lose the snow. Uh, you have to keep a good attitude, really, otherwise you'll just go into a dark hole, but sometimes it's hard, like right now. This just, this sucks. Oh, God. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. I thought the snow was bad. Oh, this is insane. Oh god. God. This is... I want my mommy. <laughs> and this is how I clean the drivetrain. Look at this. It's insane. <laughs> Nothing about today has been easy, except for breakfast, that was easy. I miss Libby and Charlie already. <laughs> I wish I was at their house right now. And look, this is what happens. Just, just gobs of mud. <sighs> oh my God. That was without a doubt the most trying day of bikepacking in my life. Without a doubt. One of the hardest days, physical days of my life. Yeah, I just kept moving forward. I mean, that's the only thing. I mean, I was in the middle of nowhere. There's like no, I didn't see a human all day on this dirt road. I mean, there's no way a car com can come up here right now. So I just kept moving forward and forward and forward and, you know, problem solving. That's what it's all about. Like. You know, something happens that's uh, less than ideal and you figure it out, right? Um, I only made it 30 miles today. I was thinking about 90, <laughs> not even close. And I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. <laughs> don't leave home without it. Mm. You know what I love doing in the morning? Putting on soaking wet, cold shoes. Ooh, yeah, that feels so good. <laughs> I can't tell you how relieved I am to see the sun up in the sky and no clouds right now. Woo! Hello, beautiful world! Let's have some fun today! Hi there, buddy. Have a good day. And I feel like I'm getting back into my rhythm, into my groove from last year's Great Divide, where you just pedal and you look to your left and your right and you listen to the birds and just appreciate being out here. And even though I'm alone, you know who's with me? All of you. 
Definitely, you're all with me in spirit. And John and Mira and Dana and Kevin and Barbara and John up in Montana and the Roses in Colorado and all the other wonderful people that I met when I started this journey last July. This is a continuation of that. And I, I'm tapping into that, that spirit and that power of everybody I've met along the way. And uh, I'm gonna take it with me. Just stopped off the side of the road here because I could start smelling the sage. Ah, oh, the sage. And you know that I pick sage when I can for every ride. It protects me. Ah, oh, it smells so fresh. I always love riding through towns like this. They're kind of fascinating. So much history, even though they're all broken down and busted up. You know what's making me really happy right now? The fact that I'm not pushing my bike through snow. As hard as it was, I feel like I always learn the most about myself when life gets hard. You really gotta dig deep. I love desert art. People that live in the desert just put weird stuff together and we have the Mars Polar Lander here. <laughs> this thing right here looks pretty darn amazing. I want to show you this. This is what makes New Mexico cuisine so famous. The green chilies. It ended up being a fantastic day and I'm in my groove. I'm feeling good. I feel really good. I slept in a bed last night and I needed that rest after a couple of tough days. I have made it to Abiquiu. They have a great little convenience store gas station here. Check it out. I got a big fat burrito. I'm gonna need it because going up now, about 8,000 feet of elevation toward a town called Cuba. All right, no more pavement. Time for dirt. Here's those rough roads everybody talks about in New Mexico. These are definitely the roughest roads on the divide that I've 
seen so far. They might even get rougher, who knows? I feel like my bike computer is messing with me. That little arrow there, that's where I am. And it's been there for like two hours it seems like. I haven't made any ground. I think I'm at the top. I can see further on on the map that there's some more ups, but for the most part, I'm at the highest point of today. Burr, that is some cold rain at 10,000 feet. Whoa, it's chilly. We got some seriously rough roads here. Wow. This is a This is the real deal here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the lineup for Friday night supreme dinner. We've got Rosarita organic refried beans, hatch green chilies from the state of New Mexico, and tapatio hot sauce. There's nothing quite like eating food out in the wild after you've earned it. It tastes so much better, no matter what it is. Like if I was at home and I made this burrito, I'd be like, that's kind of mediocre. But here, best burrito I've ever had in my life. <laughs> mm. Oh man, that sun feels good. It was pretty cold last night. But the sun makes everything better. And I didn't really see much of the sun yesterday, so it's good that it's back. Welcome back, sun! And the Nutella's <laughs> kind of cold, so it's all chunky, but it'll taste good. Goodbye, house. Woohoo! Take it off! All right, bike. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Finally, after up and up and up and up yesterday, I think I finally hit the long downhill.
You know, I spend a lot of time at gas stations when I'm on bike tours, because that's where food and water is. In regular life, I never come to gas stations because I don't have a car, so there's no need to come here. But anyway, I filled up my water bottles. This is all full of food and some more beans. And it feels good to be here right now, but the National Weather Service is uh, saying that there's gonna be high winds all day long. Yay! <laughs> fighting headwind but at least I've made it quite a distance you can see way way out there the mountains where I came from and right now it looks like just like a dust bowl Every time I ride by a house, the dogs come charging. Oh my god, that was the hardest day of my life. Oh man. Okay, great. Okay, so you are my you rescued me today. Thank you so much. No yeah. problem. Uh, so this is your wife? Yeah, it's my wife, Yolanda. Yolanda, nice to meet you. How are you doing? My granddaughter. Hello, hello. And what's your name? Cody. Cody, nice to meet you, man. Uh, we're both um half Pueblo Indian. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I'm Zuni and he's Hamus. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So are you from this area? Like I'm from uh, Arizona. Oh, you are? Okay. But I'm originally from Hames. Oh, okay. That's the clan that I have from my mom. Okay. And this is this is your son here? And that's my son. This is Herbert the third? Yep. That's my husband's artwork. He's the one that made the, the artwork here. Oh, and it's an old Pueblo? Or? Yeah. It's uh, like ruins and stuff like that of the Chaco Canyon. And Chaco Canyon is very yeah. close to here, right? It's very close from here. Yes, it is. I, originally, that's where me and my family were. We we lived there, but my family was chased off the the land because the government took over. So my family was chased off their land, even though their house was still there, everything was still there, and they got chased off. They were being told, you know, you, this land doesn't belong to you no more. So move out. So they left uh, any of their belongings inside the house, and they just took whatever they could and then just walked to here and they end up here and so um, public and title to to relocate wow. so the government didn't even care like how to relocate any of the families that they chase off of. once they tell you to move you know you just get chased off they don't help you try to relocate you or give you another land to live on yeah, that's that's some dark history in the United yeah, States. Yeah. I'm not proud of that. And plus, um, my great grandmother that made that, she participated in the long walk as well. So she said she was only about like 13 or 14 years old when the time that they invaded the their Hogan. And what is the long walk again? The long walk that took place like um, many years ago, and they walk all the way to Fort Sumner where they were ca uh, captive and as prisoners there and they kill many Native Americans like us. So that's, that's, uh, the long walk is part of our history. Wow. In the 1860s, more than 10,000 Navajos and Mescalero Apaches 
were forcibly marched to a desolate reservation in eastern New Mexico called Fort Sumner. Nearly one-third of those interned there died of disease, exposure, and hunger, held captive by the U.S. Army. Looking good! <laughs> Whoa, yeah! What do you think about that helmet? It's cool. It's pretty cool. Are we gonna have a race right now? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Three, two, two, one, go! Okay! You're too fast! Oh, there she goes. She's in overdrive. Ah, let's call it a tie. <laughs> Look at him now. Now he is, I'm his best friend. He was barking at me earlier. Hey there, sweetie. And you were born with a bike? Yes, and then um, would you um, teach me how to ride a bike? That's so cool. I was kind of born on a bike too. I love bikes. So this was another one of those rough days where I didn't quite know how it was going to end. And then it ends in the most magnificent way possible. And this all happened because Herbert and his son Jerry just drove past me and saw me, you know, fighting the wind. And were like, that guy probably needs help. And so they just stopped and rolled the window down. And we talked through the window and on my bike. He's like, hey, if you need a place to stay, we live 15 miles up the road. And now that I'm here, he said multiple times, we just like helping people. And I wouldn't have dreamed that I would stay with the Navajo family and the Navajo nation. And this is quite a beautiful and unique life experience. Yolanda, thank you so much for everything. This was one of the biggest treats of my life, so I really appreciate meeting you. And Herbert, thanks for picking me up off the road. No problem. It's for anybody. Yeah, I love it, man. Sometimes when we open up to any person that needs help. We, we, let, we let them stay at our house, so I really appreciate it. Yeah. Come by our house. My heart is full. My heart is very full. <laughs> my body is absolutely exhausted and I'm say this with all honesty this past week has been the hardest week of bikepacking in my life I'm just kind of beat up you know and I hadn't really bike packed for six months before this so my body's like what's going on <laughs> so I stopped today at 2 p.m. 55 miles I feel good about that and I'm just gonna chill out because my legs and my body and my mind are just tired Now this is beautiful. I love these types of deserts with the big iconic bluffs, kind of what you see in the old Western movies.
Good morning, cows. Hello. So I've run into quite a bit of sand. <laughs> oh, I see a sign for pies right there. Okay, here we go. Look at these beautiful pies. <laughs> Yum. So you're gonna put ice cream on my pie? I'm putting ice cream on your pie. All right, <laughs> you're an angel. Look at that. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you so much. Whoop, whoop. Check this out. Mm. I've already had a few bites. It really is one of the best pies I've ever had. The Villa Ranch. I think I found my home for the night. So I've only been here a couple of minutes and I'm all excited because I found this amazing place. And then a hiker shows up and her name's Hi Barbara. You. And you're hiking the whole thing? Yes, I started in the border in, in uh, south of Lordsburg and I plan to finish in Montana, yeah. Montana, wow. So that's mm. many, many months away. Four and a half, five months. Oh, beans and eggs! Hey. Beans and eggs! Skull! <laughs> nice to meet you! Nice to meet you too, this is so fun! Thank you, Davila Ranch, for this beautiful oasis. All right, hey doll! Vises! Vises, Sveria! Vises, Sveria, yeah! Check it out, look at this. GDMBR water, water in tub. Wow, look at that, there's definitely jugs of water in there. The trail angels strike again.
This right here puts a smile on my face. This is like the lone tree in the middle of this prairie where there is not another tree that looks like this for as far as the eye can see. Yes, look at that. I was at the bottom of that canyon just 20 minutes ago. He climbed pretty quick out here. It is time now for me to take the Continental Divide Trail, the actual trail that the hikers take. This is an alternate into Silver City, the other way is the road in. And you know, I like mountain biking and this is gonna be full on single track mountain biking. Probably very difficult. I looked at the uh, map, lots of up, but whatever goes up must go down, right? And I took the road less traveled and it made all the difference. <laughs> Whew. It might not look steep to you, but it is incredibly steep. Oh. Oh. Oh, no! So the unthinkable just happened. I broke one of my belts and I'm guessing all the stress from the mud is what weakened it. Gosh, this adventure has been so hard in so many different ways. I was just getting into my groove, going on that single track. It's so stupid. I should have brought an extra belt. Last summer on the divide, I had an extra belt the whole time but I never used it obviously. And on this trip, I'm like, oh, there's no way it'll break in a week. And I've never broken one ever. All of my priority bikes have had belts for the last five years, never even come close to breaking them. Oh man, lots of different thoughts are going through my head right now. Mostly just, Ryan, why weren't you better prepared? This is a lesson to all of you. If you have a belt drive bike, always have an extra belt. Man, what a bummer. And I don't really know where I'm going now. <laughs> I'm gonna to try to get cell service. I don't have cell service. I'm gonna call my friend who was gonna pick me up tomorrow. I was gonna to get to the end tomorrow. Just blast out the final 125 miles and 
he was gonna come pick me up. But you know, it was an adventure. And adventures don't always end up the way you want them to. No matter what happens with all this, I had an amazing time, no doubt. This was a highlight of my bike packing career. The ups and downs of this ride were, were just so immense, you know? And it made me feel so much, the highs and the lows. And you know, when you can have 10 days of life where you're just living on the edge of both high and low, that's pretty exciting. I got impatient because there's no cars on this road. So I'm just kicking with one leg, trying to roll my bike. I think there's a campsite up here, maybe like five, six miles, maybe. Uh, no cell phone reception either, otherwise I would just call an Uber. Ah, somebody come pick me up. <laughs> All right, so I've been saved. Thank you. <laughs> and not only that, but they just gave me a piece of cantaloupe and an egg salad sandwich. <laughs> And uh, I really appreciate it. You guys are wonderful. Yeah. Bye. There they go. Again, this whole trip, people have been helping me out. And uh, where would I be without the these people? You know, seriously. Feels good to know that humans care about each other, right? So I think this is the end of my ride here at Pizza Hut in Silver City. <laughs> oh, life.